Hi guys and welcome back to Alice Davis Golf. I'm here today at Heathrow Park near Oxford. I'm joined by Jeremy Dale, trick shot expert and PGA coach. And we're sharing with you a great drill today that's going to help debug you for your short game. So it's called Edward Scissorhands, I believe. It is, absolutely. An Australian journalist called it that. He said, what do you call that trick? I went, I have no idea. He went, how about Edward Scissorhands? And the movie was, I mean, it's that long ago that the movie was still popular then. So we went with it. Okay. And what you'll notice in this video, if you see the other videos I've done with Jeremy, which obviously there'll be a link down below to see the Who Will playlist, Jeremy's doing this one left-handed. Now, the other videos we've done with Jeremy are right-handed. And you might be thinking, okay, well, that's a bit strange. So, you know, tell, tell the viewers what that's about. Oh, it's definitely strange. Um, yeah, I play both ways. And um, that gave me the idea of putting together a switch hitting golf show. I'd heard about baseball players that could switch hit. Um, and I tried a, 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 um, a left-handers uh, club one day um, after a lesson and, and found I could sort of hit an okay shot. Um, anyway, cut a long story short, I ended up switching. I relearned the game and I put together this switch hitting golf show, which I've been uh, performing all around the world for, for, for ages. And the, this, this trick illustrates the one key thing that it really taught me. And the, we, I mean, as, as coaches, we talk about the path of the club, the direction in which the club is swinging as it strikes the ball. And um, what you want to do with, um, with any shot, really, that you want to hit straight, is you want the follow through and the, and the, and the backswing to be on a sort of mirror image path. If I just turn around and, and show, uh, show this camera, you can see here at what you could call nine o'clock and, and three o'clock, uh, the clubs are on identical paths. Now, of course, that's classic sort of John Jacobs instruction um, that, you know, the swing is coming from inside the line to square and then back inside again, and then you get a straight hit. As long as your grip is good and your club face position is, is good and your hand accent's correct, You'll get a straight. Uh, you'll get a straight shot. Now this trick illustrates that beautifully because at every point in this, what you could describe as a three-quarter swing, the clubs are on identical paths. And if they weren't, of course, you'd uh, you'd need to get them reshafted. So uh, you better be careful about that. Um, but you can see very clearly the club is on a mirror image track. Uh, another way of saying the same thing is that. A left-handed backswing, you see, is actually the same as a right-handed follow-through. Now, if you understand that, then you get back to a very simple idea of what the swing is. It's a sort of circle uh, from nine to three or, or longer uh, that's, that's on that mirror image path. And that's really what left-handed and right-handed golf taught me. Okay. And what kind of, just to the view, what kind of level do you play at both right and left handed? Is it similar or is there a difference? Uh, no, I'm better left handed now uh, and I switched because it felt more comfortable. I thought I would become better. Um, my, uh, my best score is one under right handed and six under left handed. So, Very good. Yeah, and I've had eight holes in one as well. This annoys people as well. Two right handed and six left handed. So, okay. yeah, so, Still yeah. yet to have one. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> so, from my point of view, this drill is really good to let you flow. It's to help you stop thinking yeah. technically. And it, again, it improves hand-eye coordination, which we talked about in other parts of the video. But really, it just lets you flow, lets you swing, find its natural kind of space. And as, said, as you said quite rightly, if you don't get it on the right kind of plane or path, you're going to get collision. You are, and in the, in the short, I mean, in the short game especially, you see people who come off that nine to three track. In the short, the short shots are so over so quickly that there's no time to reroute the club in the way that there, there is a. Uh, uh, in, a, in a long game shot, uh, and with a short game shot, if you, m most people who get into trouble with short shots, they end up in this sort of position with the head too far back yeah. and the club too much inside, and then the swing bottoms out. You see, so not only does bottoms out too early, if you stay on the clock, then actually you hit the ground at a very predictable point as well, which obviously is key for strike in short game. So the problem with coming off it is that it gives you a pattern of shots. You'll hit the ground first on some shots, so you'll fat your iron shots and, and chips as well. And in, in extreme cases, you get the yips, yeah. uh, but you'll also get push shots and, and hooks as well. That pattern of shots will be what you'll get with that particular swing Station. path error. Yeah. The opposite, of course, is the slice. You get pulls, slices, deep divots. Your chipping will be all right, but your driving won't be. Yeah. And tops as well. So you get a pattern of shots. So you're probably more consistent in your game uh, watching this as an amateur golfer, a handicap golfer at home, uh, you're probably more consistent in your path uh, than you think you are. It's just that it happens to give you different results. Sure. Let's see you in action. Yes. All right. Let me step out. All righty. I'll just pop these, these two back in. 
so, uh, and I've coloured the boards actually because people often think that I'm hitting with just one club and I'm not. So yellow, white, yellow, white. And you can probably see, I hope from down the line at least, the mirror image track on which I'm swinging. You kind of get trapped in it. That's not to say that it's easy. If you try this at home, you'll probably end up first time, at least like I did, in a hell of a mess. But uh, good luck. And I hope you enjoyed watching that. Okay, great. So hopefully you enjoyed that little demonstration of the Edward scissor hand drill. Again, for me, if you can practice it and probably practice it with three or four balls to start off with and build up to six. Build well, up to yeah, ten. even without balls, actually, just to... Uh, uh, and one thing I didn't mention um, is don't try and cross the hands that way. Okay, whatever hand is higher, whichever, it doesn't matter, even matter what it is, stays higher. Otherwise, you'll get into... Trouble. A bit of a mess. Yes, okay. exactly. I'd try it without a ball first. Okay, excellent. I'll be giving that a go in the range next few weeks. Uh, maybe I'll post a video of me doing it in the future. Maybe. Uh, but thanks, Jeremy, for coming and taking part. Appreciate your time. Appreciate absolute, your absolute pleasure. Your thoughts on how we do it. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, please click like down below. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. I've got regular content coming every week on a variety of subjects, as you can see from this video. And post any comments in the box down below. Let us know if you've got a go and how you get on. That'd be great to hear, wouldn't it? Thanks for watching.